So, mean gastrointestinal absorption is significantly greater than mean non micronized. So, importante, yung preparation is micronized. So, that's the difference with other uh, generic. No? Kasi marag may generic din eh. So, you have to see that the preparation is micronized. Because that's where it exerts its greater effect. Okay, this is just it. So, it is possible that, again, unidentified metabolites may be responsible for the pharmacological activity of the drug. Okay, and about half of those are eliminated in the feces as a change, theosmin and desmin. So the combination, 500 milligrams, was at the very heart of chronic venous insufficient results from the meta-analysis. No? So this is where the, the effect no? of the drug at that dose, no? it exerts its greater effect at that dose. So these are just some of the published data. So medyo maliit lang, but it shows us that uh, it is very effective okay, in promoting ulcer healing okay, in your patients. So all three studies showing significant results in terms of speed or in the time of ulcer healing or percentage of ulcer healing. Okay, in terms of therapeutic benefit, the addition of the uh, diosmin hesperidin compared to conventional treatment in the treatment of leg boosters. No? So the green ones are the controls. No? So the combination, okay, or the addition of diosmin hesperidin promotes greater percentage of ulcer healing. Okay? So the effect is cumulative as you continue with treatment Okay. In this study, in six months' time, a greater percent no, of the ulcers have healed in a span of six months. Now, in terms of the evolution of symptoms, of course, patients who were given diosmin and esferidine has lesser symptoms in terms of heaviness, swelling, and cramps. So it does not, it does not only improve ulcer healing, but it improves the symptomatology as well. Now, what is the indication? It should be taken, okay? What is the recommended oral dose? It should be taken at midday and evening with meals. So, sabay po, okay? Uh, for venolymphatic insufficiency, okay, you take one tablet twice a day. And for patients with acute hemorrhoidal attack, Hemorrhoids is a form of varicose veins. So you take three tablets twice a day for the first four days, okay, and then two tablets twice a day for the next three days, okay, so on and so forth. Or as you think, uh, if the patient needs a further higher dose, you can extend the treatment. Anyway, it's just a you know, uh, flavonoids. So what do the guidelines say in terms of treatment? So for patients with pain and swelling due to chronic venous disease, so venoactive drugs like biosmin, hesperidine, and other forms like glutoside, sulitexide, okay, uh, in addition to compression treatment. So remember the mainstay of treatment is compression treatment. So you can add on the MPF. And to accelerate venous ulcer healing, you can add your pentoxifilin. It is an antiplatelet or micronized purified carbonate fraction in combination with compression therapy. So what are the other available therapies that we can suggest to our patient? So, of course, there's still the open venous surgery for those severe cases. Now, open surgical treatment of varicose veins with ligation and stripping of the greater saphenous vein and the saphenous, uh, lesser saphenous vein combined with excision of large varicose veins and largely replaced by endovenous thermal ablation. Ngayon may mga bago na. No? So seldom na lang nagpapa venous ribbing kasi nga, toxic, very morbid. And these are some uh, other patients may be candidate for such, um, for those patients with large dilated and turtle veins. No? And 
highlightation of the greater suffering of spina leads to congruence with the common femoral pain in severe cases. So what is endovenous thermal ablation? Okay, so these are minimally invasive percutaneous procedure. I think in Cebu, they just do it in the clinic. Uh, outpatient procedure lang siya under to recent local anesthesia. Done under ultrasonographic guidelines. Okay, so the requirement is just for patients who do not have significant reflux, pwede sila mag-undergo no? ng endovenous thermal ablation. It's less pain and discomfort. Patients can return to work earlier compared to open surgical procedures. And occlusion of the treated vein by heat delivered into the vein through percutaneously placed laser fiber. So, pinapasok po yung parang laser fiber doon sa vein. Or, uh, other forms would be radiofrequency cathet catheter ablation. So, it's a form in the form of heat fiber. So, this is direct thermal in injury to the vein wall, no? destruction of the endothelium, collagen denaturation of the media, fibrotic and thrombotic occlusion. Okay. So, it promotes fibrosis. So, pinatitigas niya no? para hindi na lumaki. Promotes fibrosis. Relatively, uh, ano, fame, uh, medyo sikat yung spirotherapy. Okay? So, this is just injection of a chemical into the vein to achieve endoluminal fibrosis and pain. The same goal, no? fibrosis pa rin. Uh, it could either be liquid sclerotherapy, obliterate spider veins, the smaller ones, uh, spider veins or telangiectasia, okay? veins 3 mm in diameter or less. No? Uh, foam sclerotherapy, okay? this is mixing polytocanol or sodium tetradesyl sulfate so with air. These are used for larger veins, na, yung mga malalaki. No? Prolongs contact time, amplifies the effect of the chemicals. And these are all ultrasonography guided for sclerotherapy, okay. especially on uh, the, the bigger veins. Na. So those are just the several treatment that we can you know, that we can offer our patients. So of course, wala pa rin, uh, importante pa rin yung prevention. Okay. So how do we avoid? What are the different preventive measures that we can offer as well to our patients? So, we, we talk to our patients to avoid standing for long periods of time. Okay, and periodic flexion of ankles and transfer of weight to toes. So, for patients who works, no, whose work needs prolonged standing and sitting, okay, what we recommend is that every 30 minutes you tell them to move. Okay, or to jog in place, just to promote some flexion. Okay, and at the same time, movement of your muscles. Okay. Daily rest with legs raised, okay, and also at night. Okay. So this relieves the pressure and this decreases the venous hypertension. Okay. Antistasis exercises, okay, so from a more on muscular toning as well. Avoid heat, cold showers to delay progression of the disease. Pero paano yan, no? Pagod ka tapos cold shower. Malagalit si Lola. <laughs> okay. Ano, pasma daw to. No? Okay. So in summary, chronic venous disease is a common problem affecting about 5 out of 10 Filipinos. Vein dysfunction may lead to venous hypertension and signs and symptoms of chronic venous, uh, cro cardiovascular, uh, chronic venous disease, no? Now, Medyo mahirap lang i-differentiate kasi sometimes, sabi ko nga, it's overlapping. No? If you have patients who have heart failure, you see, umiitim talaga. So, it's concomitant with chronic venous disease as well. Okay, manifestations may range from no visible signs of CBD to more serious venous ulcer. And venous, venous duplex scan is a valuable tool to confirm diagnosis or provide anatomy evaluation. Again, compression therapy is the mainstay of treatment. Current guidelines have included uh, the role of flavonoids such as micronized purified flavonoid fraction for the treatment of symptoms and increase ankle swelling and accelerate ulcer healing. You know? And interventional methods and surgery may be used for more severe conditions with or those with unsatisfactory response 
to more conservative measures. So, it's already in the guidelines, no? the NPFF. So, huwag nyo lang makalimutan kasi hindi pa tayo pinapakati. So, that is mean because it's very mean. Okay, chow. It's that you said, no? Okay. Mas, mas relatively mura ba siya? I think mas mura siya compared to the elevator brand. And offers the same effect in our patients. So, if you have questions, pa ito.